to Nearby Nietzsche. Today's video is sponsored. Oh, by who? By me. Because I realised, oh fuck yeah, I've got access to a platform that I never use. One of the most well-known running gags in the American version of The Office is that the character of Jim is a smart ass who loves pranks. Aptly, it seems that the actor who plays Jim, John Krasinski, also has an aptitude for pranks and loves being a smart ass. Something I say thanks in part to a story involving George Clooney and a shit wig. Well, before that, we need to discuss an aspect of film and TV that people watching this might not be aware of, and that is that when an actor or actress signs on to appear in a film or TV show, generally, um, they have to sign something in one of their contracts that says that they will maintain their current physical appearance, whatever that happens to be, for the duration of production. And that's something we've talked about on the channel a couple times before. For example, we mentioned how Brandon Ruth had to maintain his literal superhuman physique um, for Superman Returns while he was making Scott Pilgrim vs. The World because he was technically still signed on to do a theoretical sequel that never got made, which resulted in him eating like an entire chicken per day. More fittingly, given the subject of today's video, we also talked about how Rain Wilson ultimately regretted giving Dwight Schrute this haircut because he had to maintain that same shitty haircut for the entirety of the show's production. Yeah, and there's a lot of seasons, so it's a long time. <laughs> I think it's like a, almost a decade yeah. where you had to maintain the Dwight Schrute haircut. And eventually, Rain Wilson's like, there was nothing I could do. I just wore a hat all the time. And it's one of those things that's just buried in the contract that every actor and actress signs and they sign on to appear in something. And, and I don't think we can continue without mentioning Henry Cavill because someone in the comments is going to mention it and say, well, why didn't you mention Henry Cavill? The answer which is, because you already know what I'm going to say. But if I don't say it, people are going to think that we don't know. So let's just say, yeah, the Henry Cavill moustache in mm -hmm. Superman is because in Mission Impossible, he had to have a moustache and then he had to, had to do reshoots for um, the Justice League movie, but they wouldn't let him shave the moustache and it was really funny. I'm just thinking about um, Supernatural is mm -hmm. the um, angel who's played by Misha Collins. Yes. Um, had to put on a, a certain voice to play uh, the angel and um, it hurt his throat. Hmm. to do this voice, but then he had to do it for like 15 seasons. <laughs> because he put on the voice, not expecting the show to go on as long as that it did. Yeah, I don't know if he was supposed to be in it that long, but you know, he's one of the main characters. And he had to put this voice on and just ruined his throat. What the hell happened to you? I found a liquor store. And? And I drank it. Why'd you call me? Well, something similar happened with Matthew Lillard who plays Shaggy in the Scooby-Doo movie. Yeah. It, he sounds really hoarse. And Joe, you know he got his voice to sound like that. No. He'd scream in his car for half an hour every day. Oh, like, no. On his way, he'd just sit in the studio lot and just scream until he went hoarse. And then he'd go and do his takes as Shaggy. And that's how he got like the really hoarse, dry, raspy voice. <laughs> A lot of like effort and work goes into being an actor, honestly. It's so... So much commitment. But let's bring it back to John Krasinski and season three of The Office. So what is it about season three and Jim's hair? Well, for pretty much the entirety of production on season three, John Krasinski was wearing a wig. And I'm just going to show you a picture of John Krasinski in character from season three. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you can see that. it. <laughs> Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And the story behind that is, at the time, John Krasinski's star was rising. And he was quite a hot commodity. And he was reached out to by George Clooney, who was directing the film Leatherheads. And Nisha, have you seen the film Leatherheads? I haven't, no. You haven't. Well, John Krasinski's in it, as is George Clooney, who also directed the film, as mentioned. And that film is set in the 1920s. And to cast John Krasinski in the film, he would have to adopt a 1920s-style haircut. You know, a closely cropped one yeah. that was largely slicked back. And that wasn't possible because John Krasinski was contractually obligated to wear his hair long. And it's one of those things that I think highlights just how bad characterization can be on TV shows sometimes, where they legitimately argue that Jim's hair is part of his character. And it's like, that's bad, isn't it? It is. Well, when his hairstyle is part of who the character is, it's like, come on. It, it just makes me laugh, like, when I like watch all the seasons um, to the very end and then start again, you forget how bad it is. You're you like, oh, no. Well, it's like, the best example of that is Steve Carell, who gets more hair yeah. as the seasons go yeah, on. Yeah, he does. Like, the first one, in the first episode, he looks so different to any other episode. He looks like 45 in the first episode, and then he like de-ages 10 years, because I think, I don't know if Steve Carell's ever confirmed, but he, he's obviously got on hair plugs, and he got in shape. And that's why like, one of my favorite episodes with him in it is when he's wearing that like really tight-fitting shirt, and everyone's making fun of him, but he's obviously in really, really good shape. <laughs> and like, you're watching the show, and I was like, that looks really stupid. It's like, no, Steve Carell looks fucking fantastic in that scene. He looks so buff. But bringing it back to John Krasinski and him being approached by George Clooney to appear in Leatherheads, he had to initially turn George Clooney down. 
And I imagine like you're like, you know, you're a young up and coming actor and you've got to turn George fucking Clooney down because you can't get a haircut. <laughs> and John Krasinski was obviously really excited about the prospect of working with George fucking Clooney. So we went to the showrunner, specifically one Greg Daniels, and asked them, could I please, please just cut my hair? I'll wear a wig, I'll pay for it myself, please, I want to work with George Clooney. And he went, no, because if you wear a wig, it'll be really obvious. And looking at that photo, it is pretty obvious when you know that it's a wig. Yeah. Otherwise, you just think he's got a shit hair. Couple that makes sense, because now he's like, you know, living it, what, a paper salesman in Scranton who exclusively operates over the phone. Yeah. So you thought we think, oh yeah, that's just the character. Well, the character's supposed to be quite laissez-faire, isn't he? He doesn't really give a fuck about anything. It, like, he actually does suit his character, that like, he has a bad haircut, he's just watching, I don't really care. But John Krasinski was not happy about this, and he decided to channel his inner gym and play a prank on Greg Daniels. Okay, so what did he do? Well, he went to the show's hairstylist and got them to work with him in secret to construct a gym wig. Oh, God. <laughs> and the hairstylist was initially very hesitant to do this, because they'd heard through the grapevine that... John Krasinski wasn't allowed to wear a wig, so they worried they would get in trouble. And John Krasinski's like, no, like, I won't mention names, just like, please help me this, I can't go get one. Like, you, you do my hair every single day, like, no one knows Jim's hair better than you, please help me do this. And he got the wig made, in secret, and he decided, I'm going to show Greg Daniels that you won't be able to tell that it's a wig. Oh no, <laughs> so did he actually get away with it then? Uh, he didn't just get away with it, he got away with it so hard that Greg Daniels didn't know how to respond. Because um, John Krasinski wanted to prove that the wig was not noticeable. So he waited for a filming day that required him to perform an unusual level of physically strenuous activity. And I think it's the episode where they go to David Wallace's house and play basketball. Oh, yeah. What's with Jan and Michael? I don't know. Where to begin? <laughs> <laughs> so he waited for the filming day for that episode and then went and got the wig on. And he went out there and he played basketball in the wig to prove that nobody would notice and prove that he wouldn't fall off his head if he was doing something. And then after the scene had been filmed, he marched up to Greg Daniels' office and asked him, again, could I get a wig made? And Greg Daniels, again, laid down the law and told him, look, John, I'm not going to let you wear a wig. And he said, and I quote, I will know if it's a wig, which I imagine caused Krasinski to make a face not unlike the one made by Jim, in that <laughs> meme everyone's currently thinking of, just that one. Just Jim staring through the blind, like smug Jim. I love that meme. <laughs> he tore the wig off his head, and a stunned Daniel sat there for about 10 seconds, at which point the hairstylist burst into the room, because they'd heard what Krasinski was going to do and was worried that they were going to get fired. And they, they said, according to them, they stumbled into the room and saw the wig on the table, John, pissing himself with laughter, and Greg Daniels like... I, Shit. And then he just looked at the hairstylist and went, you've got my permission, do what you want. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, you got me. And it's such a gym thing to do, isn't it? Yeah, you can see him doing that in the office. Oh, you can. Well, he, he does do stuff like that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Like, what is the one where like, he gets Asian gym in? Oh, like, yeah. He's not beyond, like, you know, physically changing his appearance to get in. <laughs> so, Jim's not Asian. Congrats to you for not seeing race. You're not Jim. Jim's not Asian. You seriously never noticed? Hey, hats off to you for not seeing race. When I was thinking about wigs as well, I love that scene where Dwight says he's got all these wigs for everyone in the office. <laughs> he's just turning around to the camera like... <laughs> just in case you bear a passing resemblance to someone. They missed the trick not having him wear the gym wig for that one. I have a wig for every single person in the office. You never know when you're going to need to bear a passing resemblance to someone. Today's episode was sponsored by me, by which I mean oh, yeah. um, I paid some money so I get the merch store that we'd seldom ever, ever advertise, um, revamped to make sure like just everything looks a bit cleaner. I've also now set up a official Instagram and TikTok account for the channel, which has like behind the scenes tidbits. Yeah. Um, because I, I, do you know how the Instagram account got set up as well? It was basically by accident because I was on Instagram and I went, is there a fact? I'm pretty sure I set up a Fact Fiend account years ago and then never and then forgot the login. And it turns out no, Fact Fiend official had not been taken. I went, well, if I don't take this, some fucker else is and start yeah. posting. So I took it and went, well, I guess I've got to use it now. <laughs> and you use it just for like to show TikTok videos. Don't yeah, you? <laughs> right, just like behind the scenes tidbits and stuff like that. But I just thought it's af after all this time, it makes sense to start actively leveraging the brand I've spent like three. I think five years now, but yeah, when, what's the oldest art film is worth? I want to say it's like 2013. It's like nearly like uh, seven, eight years building up a brand. I should probably use it in some way. 